top five worst vegetables for diabetics. Including a variety of vegetables in your meals is highly recommended. These nutrient-rich and fiber-packed whole foods can play a crucial role in combating obesity and diabetes. However, surprisingly, there are still a handful of vegetables that may significantly raise your blood sugar levels. Today, we will reveal the top five vegetables that are not ideal for individuals with diabetes. Before we proceed, we kindly ask you to show your support by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. We are Diabetic Life Matters, dedicated to providing you with the most up-to-date information on diabetes and overall well-being. We encourage you to stay tuned until the conclusion, as we unveil a hidden category of vegetables that emerging research indicates may have negative effects on your health. Prepare yourself for the top five vegetables that are least beneficial for individuals with diabetes. Five, squash of the butternut variety. This particular question can be quite challenging. There are individuals who argue that butternut squash should not be included in the recommended vegetable list for individuals with diabetes. However, others praise this starchy vegetable for its numerous advantageous properties. So, what is the truth behind this matter? Squash is one of the vegetables with the highest carbohydrate content, but its accurate carb count remains uncertain. Estimates range from 16 to 22 grams per cup, with only 3 grams of fiber, making the carb-to-fiber ratio less favorable compared to other less starchy vegetables. However, cooking squash can actually reduce its carb content. Tests have shown that baking 100 grams of butternut squash can lower the carb count from 8.3 grams to 7.4 grams. Despite being considered high carb, cooked squash has a medium low glycemic index score of 51 and a glycemic load of only 3. Winter squash is known for its low calorie content, good folate amount, and high levels of vitamins. One cup of cooked butternut squash provides over 50% of the recommended daily intake for both vitamin A and vitamin C. While the carb load from cooked or uncooked butternut squash may be problematic for some individuals, especially if consumed in excess, it can still be a healthy addition to most people's dinner tables, regardless of whether they have diabetes or not. Green peas are a nutritious vegetable that is commonly enjoyed as a side dish or added to various recipes. They are known for their vibrant green color and sweet flavor, making them a popular choice among both children and adults. Additionally, green peas are packed with essential vitamins, minerals, and fiber, making them a healthy addition to any diet. Whether steamed, sautéed, or added to soups and stews, green peas are a versatile and delicious ingredient that can be enjoyed in a variety of ways. Small green peas may seem harmless, but appearances can be deceiving. Just one cup of these little legumes contains around 20 grams of carbohydrates, making them a significant source of calories. While some classify peas as vegetables, they actually come from the Piscium sativum plant, which is a legume. The danger lies in the tendency to overeat peas due to their small size. The starch in peas can cause a rapid increase in blood sugar levels compared to non-starchy vegetables. However, the sugars in peas are complex meaning they take longer to break down in the body than simple sugars found in foods like white bread. Despite their higher carb content, peas offer beneficial antioxidants, fiber, and omega-3 fatty acids. This makes them a healthy choice as long as portion sizes are controlled. Limiting your serving to half a cup and incorporating them into a balanced meal is recommended. Three stalks of celery. Celery can be a healthy snack choice due to its low calorie content and high water content. However, it is important to be aware that certain tall growing produce, like celery, can contain high levels of pesticides. In fact, celery often ranks high on the Dirty Dozen list, which identifies the produce most heavily treated with pesticides. Research has shown that the compounds found in pesticides can increase the risk of developing type 2 diabetes by up to 64%. These compounds can negatively affect cell metabolism, insulin secretion, and potentially contribute to obesity. Therefore, consuming celery that has been heavily treated with pesticides may increase the risk of obesity and diabetes, 
especially when consumed in large quantities. It is also worth considering the amount of other heavily treated vegetables, such as tomatoes and kale, that you consume. However, it is important to note that celery itself is not inherently bad for you. It is a good source of antioxidants, low on the glycemic index, and rich in beneficial vitamins, minerals, and fiber. To minimize pesticide exposure, it is recommended to choose organic or less treated varieties of celery and always wash them thoroughly before consuming. 2. Maize In recent times, corn has become ubiquitous, not limited to just corn on the cob or popcorn. Many are familiar with the controversial high fructose corn syrup, a processed sweetener derived from corn that is commonly found in packaged goods. However, Extensive research has linked this sweetening agent to the growing obesity and diabetes epidemics. Additionally, corn itself is considered a high-carb vegetable, with one ear containing approximately 17 grams of carbs and only 2.5 grams of fiber. A cup of corn kernels can provide over 25 grams of starch, making it one of the highest starch vegetables available. Consuming excessive amounts of starchy foods can lead to blood glucose spikes and weight gain as cautioned by doctors and nutritionists. Although the glycemic index of corn is relatively moderate at 52, its glycemic load of 15 is higher than many other vegetables. Therefore, consuming too much corn without pairing it with quality protein or fiber to slow down the body's insulin response can result in blood sugar spikes. However, corn does offer health benefits. Despite its starchy nature, it contains resistant starch, which has a minimal impact on blood sugar levels. Moreover, studies have shown that consuming small amounts of whole grain corn can actually reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes and obesity. Therefore, like peas, corn can still be enjoyed in moderation as part of a balanced meal with other low-carb vegetables and protein sources. It is important to avoid excessive butter and control portion sizes. And now, let's discuss the top vegetable that is least recommended for individuals with diabetes, the white potato. You may have heard that potatoes are not recommended for individuals with diabetes. This is because white potatoes have a high sugar content, with one medium-sized potato containing about 37 grams of carbs and a boiled potato reaching a glycemic index of 82. Research has shown that regular consumption of potatoes can lead to increased blood pressure and weight gain. However, the way you cook potatoes can greatly impact their healthiness. Frying potatoes in unhealthy oils can increase their saturated and trans fat content, while boiling can result in nutrient loss. Instead, try baking, steaming, or microwaving potatoes to retain their vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Potatoes still offer nutritional benefits, including potassium, antioxidants, and vitamin C and B6. The skins of potatoes are particularly rich in fiber and contain more nutrients than the starchy insides. While white potatoes are high in starch, most of it is resistant starch, which promotes digestive health and does not cause blood sugar spikes. Therefore, white potatoes can still be included in your diet, but it is important to control portion sizes and consume the skins for their nutrient content. And that concludes the list. Keep in mind that no vegetable is truly detrimental to your health as long as you consume them in moderation. Now, let's discuss the latest types of vegetables that have been gaining attention due to their potential negative effects. It is advisable to exercise caution when consuming nightshades. There is some anecdotal evidence suggesting that nightshades such as potatoes, tomatoes, onions, and peppers may cause inflammation in certain individuals. Scientists have theorized that solanine, a compound present in all nightshades, may not agree with some people. Although solanine intolerance is rare and solanine allergies are even rarer, many individuals report experiencing discomfort such as bloating and nausea after consuming nightshades. However, extensive scientific research on this matter is currently lacking. For the majority of the population, nightshades appear to be safe and offer numerous health benefits. If you suspect that you may have an intolerance to nightshades or any other food, a simple way to determine this is by eliminating those foods from your diet and observing if you feel better within a few weeks. 
In addition to the uncertainty surrounding nightshades, it is advisable to avoid canned vegetables as they often contain high levels of sodium or sugar-based preservatives. However, you can still incorporate canned vegetables into your diet by opting for low-sodium or sodium-free varieties and thoroughly rinsing them before cooking. Apart from these considerations, most vegetables provide incredible health benefits and should be a prominent part of your diet. During meals, aim to fill at least half of your plate with low-starch vegetables such as spinach, broccoli, cauliflower, cucumber, asparagus, and more. Remember to subscribe to the Diabetic Life Matters. We appreciate your viewership. Have a fantastic day combating diabetes.